Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we've got an interesting video for you. It's a digital art tutorial by Brian Haverlin on comic style coloring. Haven't seen this anywhere on the internet, so for archival and educational purposes, I'm going to share this with you today. Let's jump into it. Let's go. Hi and welcome uh, to coloring for comic books. And this is coloring in pretty much the uh, standard comic book style, or the one that's most commonly used today. Uh, I'm going to open up a piece that my studio colored, um, a Danger Girl piece done by uh, J. Scott Campbell, which he so graciously allowed us to use in this tutorial. Thanks, sir. Um, I got it all flatted. It already has a flats channel, or a flats layer, right there. Uh, Matt Miva originally colored this piece, and I'm going to kind of follow his original colored piece as a guide as I'm working. So, again, thanks, Matt. Um, now, Matt sets up things in channels, if you'll notice, which is uh, something I have in the coloring frequently asked questions. If you want to set things up that way, that's fine. I usually work in layers, so I'm going to copy his line art that he has in layer. Well, first let me show you how he does his, but then we'll go back to the way I do mine, so then you'll know a couple ways of doing this. Okay, we have a background layer, which is where we would apply our color. There's a layer on top of that that I've already copy and pasted uh, my flats. Now the way Matt normally does it is he'll have the background selected, he'll go into channels, put the eye on the line art, but notice that the line art channel itself is not selected, so you can't touch, hurt, or do anything to the line art. And then you're just essentially losing, using the line art as a guide. And you can color underneath it. Just kind of very similar to the way I would. But I like being more interactive with my line art. So if I want to change it or do something to it, uh, it's easier for me to do that on the fly in layers rather than having it be a channel. So, I'm going to undo that lovely red mark I just made. I'm going to copy the line art. Control A selects everything, or Apple A. Um, Control C copies it. And go back into my RGB. And I'm going to Control V, which is paste. And I've pasted in a layer. I'm going to put it in multiply mode. And multiply mode will make it so the dark lines will show through, but none of the white of it will show through. Make sure I turn that line off. And there we go. And that's normally how I like to set up a page. You can see over here in the layers palette, the top layer I have, which is hidden, there my flats channel for when I need that, and then the bottom layer. Um, what I do often to make things go quickly is I'll take the flats layer and I'm just going to go ahead and copy it and I'm going to put that into my background and throw away the background layer that Mattery has set up here. And I don't mind, I like flats actually to be like the way I have these flats right now, monochromatic. Because often people get uh, people to flat for them because <coughs> comic books being done uh, the way they are, they're usually done fairly assembly line fashion, as fast as you can do them. And if someone flats for you, then you could be coloring another page, and then when you get the flats, you're ready to go very quickly. And uh, I prefer to get flats that are monochromatic like this, because it allows me not to be tricked by anyone else's color decisions. And even if I get color flats, I'll usually grayscale them or put the uh, sort of a wash of tone over them so it's it's all one color. Anyway, let's get going with her. As you can see, a very attractive danger girl. Alright. I usually like getting started with the face, so that's what we're gonna do. Magic Wand selected the face, um, and I need my color palette, which I accidentally closed. There we go. And 
and I got the airbrush. And I have the airbrush set up so uh, pressure works with, I don't have it on size, uh, I'm kind of more emulating almost an old Photoshop brush. Um, and uh, I have it on airbrush which I'm going to change right now. I don't want that little spattering effect. I want it to be nice and smooth. It's good that Photoshop lets us do all this stuff now, because it didn't used to. But I have anyway, the brush is on um, for opacity, pressure sensitivity, and for uh, um, what else is on pressure sensitivity for? Um, pressure sensitivity that's basically about it. And I use the bracket keys to change its size. And I always have it so I'm displaying the size of my brush and not the just the little icon of the brush tool. So I think it's much more helpful. Alright. Now you notice, which sometimes happens with flats, that I didn't really get that whole area. And since I was zoomed down, I didn't see it, so this is a good thing for people to learn. Sometimes the flats, well, if they got JPEG or compressed a certain way, they'll pick up a couple other pixels. Like, see now? When I'm close in, I can see that I've kind of made, got a speckle pattern there. Well, you don't want that. And the way I can avoid that is I'm just going to increase my brush tolerance to 3. I shouldn't say brush, I should say my magic wand tolerance. And then I have it all. I'm going to go ahead and fill that with my color. Now it's nice and smooth. And Abby looks much better. Her complexion looks better. Now Jeff usually likes a very clean style. So, and with a little bit of the... So I'm going to use a fairly big airbrush. I was going to say with a little bit sort of a natural kind of makeup y effect, you know, a little blush, a little stuff. His his favorite stuff to always tell us when we're coloring his pieces, you know, is always he likes the, the Disney look. I'm going to lower the opacity. I had it on 100%. I usually have it about 38, 40. And that allows me to have a little more control over my brush. And what I do is I just go in with the airbrush. I don't cut any friskets or cuts, as they're also called. I'm just going to get the general form and shape of the figure. Let's see. I also am looking a little bit at at what Matt did on his because I want to be true to that. Okay. Now I'm going to go in and start making some cut shapes with lasso tool. Let's define her nose a little bit more. Shape there, shape there. I'm going to get a lighter tool. I'm going to go a little bit towards, notice I'm sliding over towards the yellow, making it a little bit warmer rather than just, you don't want to just go to white because then you'll get this chalky yucky thing at the end of the day. Try to avoid pure white unless you're doing something that's got a very shiny... See, I'm just hitting it, and, and when I hit the uh, selection I made, I really think of it as a metaphor for uh, a real airbrush frisket, and, and you don't want to hit all around that frisket shape. You want it to sort of bleed off. And, and, and get a soft edge and a hard edge working together for you. Okay, I did that one. Do another one. Up here. Increasing the size of my brush. Now, if I can get anything that gets too much of an edge, like right here by the eyebrow. I'll go ahead and use the smudge tool and just lightly kind of work back into it. And I can completely remove it. And I can soften up other edges. Let's say I, I, did it, I didn't like the... I'm just going back and forth lightly over where I did the, uh, the nose selection.
That's a little harsh, so I'll undo that. I'll use a little smaller brush. I do want it to go right up there. Okay. We had a little bit of a rim light here to her face, keeping it pretty th thin on the selection. I'm going to go with a cooler color for that. Across the top of my palette that you have is the first sort of batch of grays is a uh, neutral gray, then warm grays, and then a cool grays. And, and I tell you, those can really help balance out a lot of your colors. I'm just going to hit her side like that just a little bit. Okay. And if I do that there, I'm going to pull a little bit into the face, so I'm going to pull a little bit of that under her nose, just a little bit. Okay. Give her a little bit of eye shadow. I'm going to pick a darker color for that. A little darker. I'm going to drop saturation a little bit because it kind of is a shadow condition under her eyelid. So. another band closer to the eye. Make that even a little darker. Okay. eyeballing this a little bit. Sometimes you just have to kind of step back from the monitor a little bit and, and see how things are coming together. I'm just going for a little more of a highlight on the nose, give her a little bit of shine there. Alrighty. Right now I'm kind of playing it so that the light is more or less coming, the primary light that's illuminating her face is, is coming down more or less on top of her. So I just want to hit that side of the nose, or side of the face, so she doesn't look it beeped at me. He was telling me I was a dummy. Okay. So we get a little bit of that going on. Now, again, I'm being careful. I don't want to give her... You don't want to give a woman's face too many lines, and I'll probably soften up some of these ones that I have here. Let's take the airbrush. I'll get one of these mid-tones, and I'll just go over this area that I want to soften a little bit. And I'll just smooth that out a little bit. And this is with no, there's no selection here. I'm just kind of going over it to smooth the area, smooth the modeling out a little bit. Okay, that's good for me right now. Excuse me, my allergies. I have a little bit of a snuffing nose. All right, let's get the uh, lips. So I'm going to go back to the flats channel. Or flats layer, I should say. I'm going to pick fairly light, sort of cool red. I usually work dark to light, but you don't have to do that. You can do whatever is more comfortable and more natural for you. It's more natural for me to work this way. And again, I'll do a little bit of modeling just, just with the airbrush so I get the general shape. The lips will be darker, the top lip will get a little darker.
That's a little bit of a dead color. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit more of a pinky pink. I'm going to slide it over to this side of the selection. Hiding the selection. Okay. And now the lips are going to be shiny, so they can actually have a pretty good highlight hit on them. So I'm going to go ahead and use a pure white here. There we go. Shiny lips. Okay, let's go for our eye now. Actually, I just selected that, and I didn't need to do that, because I have flats. Kind of going in there with a bit of a gray. I'm leaving a little bit of the flesh that I had in there. I'm going with a little warmer gray down here at the bottom. Again, the idea is, you know, the, ball, the, the eye is a ball. And it's sitting in a socket with the eye. The upper eyelid is over the top, so the upper eyelid, especially if light is coming from above or, or, or an angle slightly above the the person um, will cast a shadow. I'm going to go for a more hard edge tool now. I'm just going to make a little bit of a band there for that cast shadow I was talking about. These are for highlight shapes I'm doing now. Okay. Let's see, Abby looks like she has brown eyes according to Matt's original coloring job, so brown eyes it is. Now I have my general, you notice my palette is not a, a tremendously large one, but it doesn't encompass most of the, the color ranges. If I want variances, I usually then will just pick something from up there and, and use my sliders to sort of customize what I want. So I want this to be a little bit more of a browny brown, so I'm going to saturate it a little bit. Fill that color into the eye. Again, same rule applies to the iris that applies to the uh, the the whites of the eyes. Uh, there'll be a little shadow coming from that upper eyelid. So I'm going to do the highlight part of that, which would be at the bottom since the top part would be shadow. And let me go ahead and switch to my hardest brush, and then without a, uh, there's no frisket here. I'm going to get a brighter color, make it small, and just give a little hit down there. And while I'm at it, I'm going to do that down here, too, with white. 
I'm picking from the, the screen now, I'm picking flesh color, so I have a little bit of that come down here in the corner of the eye, like it should. Again, this is all just using the brush tool. And there would also be a little bit of a shadow underneath the eyelash. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. It also works as a little bit of a a little bit of a um, makeup trick there. I'm adding a little bit here on the... And again, if you go, oh, that's too hard, you can take the smudge tool and just lightly going back and forth over it. I'm just going back and forth lightly. I can soften that out. Okay. added a hit on the uh, the highlights Jeff has in the uh, the eyeballs and that face looks pretty good to me so far so let's go ahead and move on to the hair <coughs> now you see I oversprayed here when I was spraying my hand but because I have flats up here it's okay Abby is a blonde. I'm going to start her with a bit of a darker base. Desaturate it a little bit. And sometimes to get a, what I'll do is then as I'll, again, I'm kind of building up my darks first. So I'm going to shape some of this hair. Switch to some more blondy blonde colors. Right now she's kind of a strawberry blonde. I'm gonna as I go to work towards my highlights I'm gonna give her some more yellowy highlights which will make that work out. Okay. Now you could almost leave it at that, but we want to go another step. So let me Okay, let's go back on to the hair. So I'm going to go in and start cutting frisket shapes now. People call them cuts, you know, or frisket shapes or whatever. I, you know, I, I really think that they are sort of um, stylized versions of the old airbrush guy's stuff, so or even brush shapes, I kind of think of them as, as I'm cutting them. And you notice I'll cut a few at a time. If you sit there and cu cut one at a time, one will take you a long time. And, uh, and you can't really see how they work together that well. Again, I want to lose that edge more. I'm dropping the opacity on my brush that I put back up a second ago. I'm letting them fade off. I'm just kind of hitting the middle section of them. Okay. Going up here on the higher part. 
again with Jeff's work it's really important that these shapes are are clean and, and crisp because he almost has an animation style as it is if I go like too hyper realistic on him or something if I don't go stylized enough he definitely looks a little strange doesn't complement the art very well Again, I just want them to fade off on the edges. Okay. I'm going to do another round of highlights after this. But this way you can see. I'm going to cut these ones at the same time. selection okay and now let's give her a really nice sort of shines let's go here 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 All right the places that are going to get the most light here, here, here. I'm going to go to more to a pure yellow. And a bit of a smaller brush. That's better. And I think I'll just leave them on the top up there. A little bit lighter. Let's go all the way. If you go 15 with something that's just pretty much just a pure yellow, it's going to be a very bright, poppy highlight. Okay. I'm just going to clean up. I have these, she has this flip hair, so she has much more of a shadow condition there, so I'm going to darken those up as they get near there. detail just in here in this hair not a lot I'm just kind of selecting again I'm following Jeff's shapes that he already draws you don't want to go against the shapes because then the coloring is not complementing the line art and it won't flow and it will look bad and that's a progress um, okay hiding that selection Picking sort of a mid value of the hair color. Oops. Switching back to my softer brush. Just hitting a little bit, just so it adds a little bit of detail in there. That's all I want. I don't want to cause a lot, call a lot of attention to it. Okay. Let's say at the moment the hair is done until I decide to do something else with it. I'm going to put a little color in her eyebrow now picking the darker color of the hair. And I'm using my hard brush that I have size variance on and opacity variance so I can really kind of control it with a stroke or a couple strokes. And then give a little bit of the highlights in there. Alrighty. She's looking pretty. Okay. Let's do her 
torso. Again, you'll notice I oversprayed a little bit on the face there. So, luckily, I have my flats channel. And she has sort of a white t-shirt, which I'll give sort of a cool gray base to. I'll switch back to a little bit of a darker color here. Not much, because this is going to go to white. So I'm just going to hit the edges. And where the shadow from her head would go. And I'll start painting more of my highlight areas. Again, I'm just kind of roughing in with the airbrush. And the general shape. Some of you will like to be just a, a airbrush artist and won't do a lot of the frisket cutting. Um, Drew, who works for my studio quite often, uh, pretty much hardly ever uses the friskets other than to have basic color selections. He just renders the heck out of things with his, with his airbrush. Alright. Now I'm going to do our cut shapes. I'm going to cut a few of them at once. I just made that color a little brighter than when I originally airbrushed with. Oh, I hit just some edges up here. Just a little bit. Notice I'm just letting it kind of fade out in places. I'm going to hit that edge up here, but I'm not going to hit the bottom edge of that frisket very much. I'm going to let it fade off and stay soft. That really might be all I do there. Um, I'll probably do a little bit, as I added that rim light up there, I'll add a little bit to her in here. Just some like reflected light coming into that shadow. See how that separates that nicely. The edge of rim light. And, you know, I, I'm happy with the way that is right now. So, right now, I'm not going to do anything to it. If I did, I probably the only thing I would do would be add a little bit more of a defined shadow here. Picking that color, darken it a little bit. And just hit it. Like so. Alright. Get this part of the jacket. This is blue. So I'm going to put blue in there. Oops. Yeah. Some blue in there. Again, just sort of modeling the shape with the airbrush. I 
zoom me out so I can see the whole coat. Now notice if you want to get like and see how I'm picking on an edge here, you can do that if you just go with a smaller brush without going having to switch to uh, a hard edge brush. And that's all done with the bracket keys. If you guys have any questions, and I'm sure there's a lot of stuff here, and I'm going not super quick, but I'm going quickly, that you can, uh, if you look in the documentation that accompanies the CD, there'll be website information on a place where I'll check in from time to time and answer questions on a bulletin board. When I teach classes, that seems to be one of the best ways to do it because people bring up all kinds of questions and sometimes students will answer their own questions pretty darn well. Um, but like I said, I'll check in too from time to time and then they can always answer. Okay. Let's go for some brighter parts here. Now this is one of Jeff's things. Jeff sometimes does this, uh, since we also digitally ink a lot of his work, he'll draw like this knowing that he wants black shapes put in there. I don't have time to put in his black shapes in this tutorial, so I'm going to render this my own way. Trying to follow his stylized shapes, and they're a little they're a little different because there's not the blacks to support them. But I think it will still work out. If you look in all these shapes, see where my brush is right now. That in the original piece, we actually filled that area with black, that area with black, that area with black. Try to do most of your strokes like just one stroke. Don't go in there and do little dee 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 dee. Try to avoid that because then the airbrush will look spotty and it just won't look that good. All right, I'm gonna now define some more of these shapes with my lasso tool. Hiding the selection. Gonna pick a nice sort of bright blue. And again, I'm, uh, I'm hitting just the edges of my selection here. I figure this is kind of a shiny material, and that's why I'm doing another highlight to it. of these ones on the arm at, at once.
And one more harder one, about here and here and here. Hide the selection. And there we go. Now to the other side. Hide the selection. And there we go. And give a little bit of a reflected light in the shadow conditions here. Hide them. Go with sort of a gray. Just really lightly. And that's kind of emanating from the, the, the edge there. It fades out. Okay. Let's do the arms. She's got a cool green outfit, so let's go with the base here. Actually, that's not really a cool green. That's a warm green. There is your cool green. Okay. Cool green's more towards the blue, and warm green's more towards the yellows. And again, I'm just going to rough out the shape here. Remember, the arms are basically tubes. Think about that when you render them. And think about that when you look at people and snicker, because their arms are tubes. No, just kidding. Um, okay. Okay. Let's finish off those arms. Actually, I'm going to give a little bit of a broader selection. Do this one at the same time. I'm just doing a quick stroke down the middle. Again, I probably wouldn't do this on a lot of people's art, but since Jeff's sort of the hard edge cut sort of complemented, I'm going to do that. Okay, now I'm going to do more sort of the folds. Folds and highlights from the folds. And you'll find you have to go either more towards the warms or towards the cools as you to get these highlights. It's a little hard for me. I'm going to do that a little bit softer. Okay. Now the same thing over on the other side. Again, just don't go to white when you're going these highlights, not just about adding white. And 
Again, I'm just doing one stroke up the up there. That was two strokes actually. And I think it's okay to leave it like that. If you wanted to go one more step, I'd probably add just a couple smaller highlights, just because again, this looks like it might be some sort of leathery type material, even though it's green. Dyed green leather. There you go. Danger Girl style. Okay. Now again, I might give us a little bit of a sort of edge light, rim light on this side of her. Holding the shift key as I do these selections, so I can do multiple selections at once. bit funny thing and we frisk it down here so I'm going to go ahead and use the smudge tool to smooth that out a little bit. I might even go uh, back with a harder edged brush. Clean it up with that real quick. Okay. Let's see how she's. Again, you gotta zoom out to check your relationships and see how things are working. So yeah, she's working out all right. stomach area, filling with my darkest flesh. General modeling with my midtones. shapes. sprayed a little bit up here, so I'm going to fix that. <coughs> Excuse me. Shift-B, I can switch to my pencil tool, which is a hard edge tool. I'm just going to go and pick that darker gray and just clean that up real quick. Going back to my airbrush tool. I think I want that to be less defined, so I'm going to lose that line as it goes down the stomach. It might give us a little bit of uh, rim light. I 
get all these cool. I'm gonna use a little bit of a cool gray for that. Lighten that up. The uh, shirt really should cast a little bit of a shadow down there, so I'll do that. Alright, the selection. There we go. Okay, let's go the inside of that jacket. I just noticed we don't have anything there. We'll make it green. Filling with a green. I'm just going to hit with a airbrush here and airbrush there real quick. <laughs> They're going to be dark blue, like the inner part of the jacket. But so let's pick the darker part. Fill with that. Let's rough in with the airbrush. Going a little closer. And actually make some shapes here. Again, following Jeff's form. I wanted to make the gloves a little bit shinier than the rest of the jacket. I would add a harder hit with a brighter highlight. Like this. Do the same thing over here. So she has a little bit of flesh coming through in these gloves. I'll just do a quick airbrush hit. And don't be beeping at me. Gently shifted over my frisket. I didn't notice, but it's easy to fix. Again, I'll go with the harder edge brush tool. Bring it up to 100%. Now I'll just pick 
this color and draw where I need it. I'm not going to go and repair the gun because the gun I already have a first good shape for. Okay. more dark blue areas on these glows. Switch back to my soft airbrush. Now you really can, I mean, just go in and render like crazy on stuff. The trick is really to sort of have uh, it work simply and really cleanly. Over rendering is easy to do by accident. Zooming out a lot will keep you from doing that. I mean, you can go into a hand and, and render the heck out of the thing at 300% and and when it goes to print, half those details are going to be lost. Do the gun. Okay, so the gun's got a hard surface on it, so you can go ahead and and those friskets can be left pretty hard. Let's see where Jeff kind of rendered some highlight shapes for us. We'll follow those. I'm going to pull some of that blue for my highlight. shiny so we'll go ahead and add some small hard hits bright hits I'm gonna have them fade more and be brightest at the end I think that works a little better from the gun itself. Get to my color picker. I'm just going to lighten that a little bit. Desaturate it. So I get more of a... So we have the cools coming in from the one highlight side and a little bit of seemingly warms, even though they're more of a neutral than anything else on that side. Okay. 
pants basically match the same color scheme as the jacket. Yeah, I always still accidentally do an control A for my brush tool. I still want to do that A for airbrush. I'm going to pick a nice dark color here. Hide the selection. I'm go a little bit darker with some of this. shapes in here, these folds. Now these are going to be shapes I just want to hit again. They're going to be soft shapes. I just want to kind of on my edge at the bottom and fade off. And these middle ones, I kind of hit the center. I want them to fade off on the sides. A little bit there. Just so we get the shadow. Again, just letting it fade off down there. If I wanted to get brighter, do a couple harder hits near the knee, maybe on the thigh. Hit those a little harder. Probably a little bit more of a bright color. Yeah, it pops a little bit more. I was going to give her a little shiny pan, so I would hit one more highlight in the middle, keeping it kind of small. Let's do the green part. Again, pretty much the same as the arms. The rough in with the airbrush general shape. That was my airbrush noise, just like that. Shh. <laughs> okay. I'll go ahead and just find that shape a little bit more.
And one more for the shiny. Again, smaller. She's working out okay. Let's do the boots. I'm gonna make those the same sort of dark blue as the rest of her costume. Just to give us a little color harmony going on here. Again, I'm following <coughs> Jeff's highlight shapes. And again, normally, just like the jacket, Jeff would want things inked black in here. But that's not what I'm doing. will definitely be shinier. Small hits. Again, if you're not sure where stuff goes, uh, you can do it through trial and error, but you can also, you know, grab a fashion magazine, try and find some other boots and see how light hits them. Again, it's the stylization I'm doing, but I'm trying to do a stylization that's a little bit based off of some reality, because that's what really makes it work. Okay, belt and holster. Let's get these done at the same time. Again, we'll uh, use that same sort of dark blue. Get our mid-tone. Then do our selection shapes. And 
give these a little bit more of a blue highlight just to differentiate them a little bit from the rest of the the piece. Give it a little bit harder highlights. Now when I um, I have an a action set up that I basically hide and smooth my selection too. Because I do like to do a lot of selections zoomed out like this because I can really judge the piece better. Um, but when you do selections like that, they become very sort of coarse and they need a little bit of smoothing. So I have it so it smooths the selection by a couple pixels and hides the selection at the same time in one keystroke, which is handy. I also have one that I use sometimes for if I'm doing a quick anime thing, it will automatically I do the selection and I hit a button and it will smooth the selection and, and fill with the next brightest color. So if you're doing that sort of anime band thing, you need to do it really fast or just add some detail somewhere really quickly. Alright, let's do these buckles. And then we'll be ready to start doing some shiny stuff. Again, think of it as a high, as a horizon line in there because it's a shiny. I'm going back with a small airbrush and giving us back that horizon line in there, and then I'm going and giving us a little cool color in the darker part of that horizon on both the pieces, and then. I'm switching to my pencil tool. I'm getting a bright color. I'm going to go over the brighter yellow right at the edge for a highlight. Okay. Let's see. And that's a red mark there. Juicy red. Alrighty. Now, as per usual, I was bad about saving, so I'm going to save it now. Eyeball it. Let's see if there's some changes I want to make. And a couple more highlights to the pants. And the fold area here. Switch from the pencil tool to the brush, back to the brush tool. Pick a nice bright greeny. Okay. Let's see. Add a couple more highlights to the hair. Actually, I'm going to give her a little bit of that room light that I had before. I have on so much of the piece because it would hit in the hair too.
And I think she's working out all right. One more highlight in the hair where it bounces down here. think we're done with the basic coloring. Now sometimes what you want to do to is do a little bit of if you're done with a piece. There's levels and, and see, you know, if things are really kinda make sure I don't have something selected. Of course I have something selected. Hold on. Okay. We'll select little layers my levels, I mean, sorry. And just see if everything's kind of sitting the way you want it to. Could it use a little bit of brightening? Too much brightening. Or could some spots use brightening? Sometimes it's good to kind of look at and see. Okay, because like, you can always do a, a layer uh, that's just the levels and then go in and, and remove it from certain areas. Like, let's say I want to brighten the face. So you can do layers overall and then or a, a layer that's 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 just a levels layer and, and go back into it. Um, but it's just again a good way to overall see what's going on. You know, don't want to brighten it, don't want to darken it. Is it okay as it is? I think I want to brighten her just a little bit. Not a lot, just a little touch. About five percent never hurt anybody. And you can also see sometimes a little hue and saturation. You know, do you want to make it a little more saturated? Jeff usually likes her a little more poppy, so and I tend to go a little understated with my color often, so I'm gonna add this is about five. It's hard to see, but it will make a difference. And then let's go ahead and give her some shines. We do that with um, a screen layer on top of the line art layer. So I'm making a new layer. I'm going to fill it with black. The reason we fill it with black, for some reason, it seems to make the screen effects pop a little bit more. Uh, I don't know exactly why that is. It's just the way it is. So I'm going to... Screen effects are usually best done with a fairly saturated bright color. So I'm just doing a little bit of a shine on the gun. Um, but you could even do a little bit on the... If you wanted to play like this was really leather, you could hit on top of that. on the hair. You could just doing a couple quick hits on top of there. Leave a little one on the belt buckle. Make it a little shiny. If you wanted to really do I'm gonna make another layer real quick and do a a little flare. I'm just doing an anchored selection. This is kind of being really loosey-goosey with this. But since it's on a layer, why the hell not? I'm going to make that screen. Notice the difference when I change it to screen, it kind of brightens the whole thing up. Yeah, see if a hit works there. Now my brush isn't my brush is all in normal mode. It's just the layer that's in screen mode. 
Let's see how it's too wide on that one side because I did it so far zoomed out. But I can fix that with the smudge tool. Pulling down, pulling in a little bit here. Now you can also, what's cool about the smudge tool is I can just take this shape and really kind of wig it out if I want to. Or not. I don't like it, so I'm going to erase it and do a proper one. I'll include some special effects that you can automatically bring into these pieces. You don't have to make them from scratch like I am right here. But it's good to know how to make them from scratch, too. Being a little more careful. Switching to pure white for the center. I'm deselecting and just doing an unfrisketed hit in the middle so it gets a Nice white there. And there she goes. Now, I have it on a layer, so I can always go to Human Saturation and change the color coming off of it. Because I, I don't like them when they're pure white. That's why I want yellow in there. And it could be white right at the, the edge. But if you do colorize mode and put it to 100% saturation, you can you know, see how it looks with all kinds of different colors in that flare. But I'm going to keep it the way I had it. Just a little sparkle on her danger girl. And I think we're done. I hope you enjoyed it. There's a lot of stuff to learn. Again, the accompanying materials on the CD will help you with some questions, but uh, check out the uh, website as well. Because that will be more interactive for you, I think. Um, you also notice on this one when I do have the PSD, the layered PSD posted on the uh, the um, The one that's on the CD, it's going to be cropped a little bit. Um, that's so I'm not giving away some of Jeff's complete artwork. Um, so, anyway, but it gives you plenty to still follow the tutorial and uh, to uh, experiment with yourself. Thanks! See you the next one! That's going to do it for the video. I hope the tutorial by Brian Hamlin was insightful, informative, and uh, let's hope you learned something. And you can take those skills into whatever projects you're working on. If you liked everything you've seen in this video, like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, share it out in social media, tell your friends about it, tell your mom about it. You know, she wants to know about it. Alrighty, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye.